Hi everyone, this is Celine from Blue Calla Patterns. Welcome to video four for the Coneflower Crossbody. Uh, in this video, we'll be assembling our lining shell for our bag. Um, if you followed videos one to three so far, um, this is what your exterior shell should look like. So we've attached the body panels to the gusset, trimmed our seam allowance, and turned the bag uh, right side out. So we can actually set this aside for now. We won't need it in this video. And then you'll want to get all of your lining pieces. And what we'll do to start is assemble the lining gusset. So you'll need your gusset bottom lining piece and your two uh, side gusset pieces. And you're going to do exactly the same as you did for the exterior gusset. And you're just going to pin the side gusset pieces, the bottom edge, to the shorter edges of your gusset bottom piece. Now I'm not going to repeat exactly the same instructions because we've already done this once before. Um, I'll just review quickly. Uh, you're going to go over to your machine, you're going to sew these together, and then you're going to press this, open them up, press the seam allowance towards the gusset bottom and then you're going to top stitch your seam allowance at either end of the gusset bottom. And then you can set aside that piece. For the lining, we'll start with the easy part and assemble our slip pockets. So for this you'll need one of your body lining pieces and you'll need your two remaining front pocket D lining pieces. And you're going to take these two pocket pieces and you're just going to place them right sides together and you're going to pin them along the top edge. And then you'll go over to your sewing machine and you'll sew these together along this top edge only. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so I've sewn the, um, the two slip pocket pieces together and I just wanted to show you that when I first um, start pressing the top seam allowance where you've just sewn, I like to first press it open and then I will put them wrong sides together and then I will press that top seam flat again. And then I'll go over to my machine and I'll top stitch the top edge. Okay, so I've top stitched the top edge of my slip pocket. Now you're going to take one of your body A panels and place the slip pocket piece over top. And I'm just going to pin it to the lining piece. And then I'm going to take this over to my machine and for now I'm just going to do a quick basting stitch all the way around uh, with one quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so to divide this into two different, uh, two separate slip pockets, you just fold this in half. Sorry, that's fine. Fold this in half, wrong sides together. And then using a fabric pen, you're just going to want to make um, a mark at the very top and the very bottom and then you'll go over to your machine and you'll sew from the bottom center mark towards the top center center mark and make sure that you backstitch when you get to the top edge and then you'll have two separate slip pockets okay there you go we have two separate slip pockets now we can just set that aside along with our gusset now we're going to install our zipper pocket. So for that you'll need your 7 inch zipper, your zipper pocket facing piece, and your two um, slip pocket, your, sorry, your zippered pocket uh, lining pieces. 
So to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the, the bottom edge of both zipper pocket lining pieces towards the wrong side and I fold about three-eighths of an inch uh, towards the wrong side. And I do that for the bottom of each piece. Now if you're using a directional print, make sure that it's the bottom edge that you're, that you're folding over. Okay. Now with one of these pieces, only one, you're going to take it over to your cutting mat and you're going to trim away ruler, uh, the top one inch. So this is not the folded edge that you're trimming away, it's the, the top edge. Okay, you can get rid of that. Okay, so now you're going to take this piece, the shorter piece, and you're going to take your seven inch zipper and you're going to place it along the top edge that you just cut and you just you just center it and you want your zipper pull to the right okay i'm just going to pin this in place and then i'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to sew along this top edge to sew the zipper in place with one quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so the zipper is sewn to the, uh, the lining piece. Now I'm just going to press it away from the zipper. Okay. All right, so that's what it should look like. Take your second zipper pocket lining piece and place the uh, opposite edge of your zipper tape, so the one that has nothing attached. Place it along the top edge of your remaining piece. Pin it in place and then you're doing exactly the same thing. You're going to go over to your machine and you're going to sew the zipper to the, uh, the zipper pocket lining piece with one quarter inch seam allowance along this top edge. Okay, so uh, I've sewn the remaining zipper pocket lining piece to the zipper and I also uh, pressed that one away from the zipper. Now this is what you should have. Uh, my zipper is right side facing up. My pull is to my left and I have the shorter zipper pocket lining piece at the bottom and the, the taller pieces at the top. So I'm going to set this aside for now and I'm just going to get my body lining piece, the remaining piece, and my zipper pocket facing piece. I'm going to flip the zipper pocket facing piece so it's wrong side facing up. And I will pause the video and find my template. Okay, I found my template. Uh, this is another template that I sort of splurged on even though I really don't have the room. Uh, it ha just has uh, the rectangle openings for 7 inch, 8 inch, 9 inch zip. So I'm going to use the uh, 7 inch by 3 eighths of an inch. If I was using a number 5 zipper for my interior pocket, I would probably use the half inch um, by 7 inch rectangle opening. So you can use um, whatever height, depending on the zipper that you're using. Okay, so... Now this doesn't have to be drawn exactly in the middle, but it's nice to have um, one inch of space along the sides on the top. Okay, draw my rectangle. Okay, all right, so now I will take this and you're going to center it, um, center it uh, horizontally 
and you'll want it two inches, so this top edge, to be two inches from the top edge of your body panel. And you pin that in place. And I'll take this over to my machine and you're just going to sew uh, around the lines of the rectangle that you just drew. When Keep your needle in the down position and it helps when you're rotating at the corners just to make a really nice rectangle shape. Okay, so I've sewn along the lines of the rectangle. Now I'm going to draw a line through the center and you don't draw all the way to the ends. You leave about half inch of space and then you draw uh, diagonal lines from that center line going to each of the four corners. And then you have to cut out those lines. So I usually use my rotary cutter for the center line, which if you're not too steady with your rotary cutter, you might not want to do that. You might want to start with your seam ripper and then use a pair of scissors. And then when you're cutting the diagonal lines, you want to try to, to, to cut as close as you can to the corner without cutting any of the stitching. And then you're going to go over to your ironing board and you're going to pull that facing through the, the, the hole that you just cut and you're going to press the opening. So I'll bring my iron over. Okay, so when you're uh, when you're pressing the uh, rectangle opening, um, I find it easier to, do, to go slowly. And then what I do is I sort of roll the seam to make sure that it's out all the way. And I do this a little bit out of time. And then I press to set it. And then I keep going. I don't like to rush this part because I find if you take your time and you do a good job, it really makes your, your zipper pockets look nice. And I flip it. And then once I'm done pressing it from the front, I will flip it over and then I, I make little adjustments on the back as well. Sometimes helps uh, a bit if you moisten your fingers, just to grab, so you can grab the fabric a little bit easier. I messed up over here a little bit. Okay, and then I turn it over. Sometimes I've created a fold, so I just straighten it out and press again. Okay, there you go. That's all done. So I'll just put away my ironing board and then I'll, we'll come and complete the installation. Okay, so now you'll want to take your zipper with your attached uh, zipper pocket lining pieces, pull to the left, the shorter piece is at the bottom, the taller piece should be at the top. And then you just place your uh, body panel so that the zipper is in the center. Now, <clears throat> I've, I've gone through the zipper installation before in my previous videos and I'll repeat myself. There's a few ways to do this. Uh, you can pin this in place. You, some people like to use uh, sewing tape. Uh, some like to use glue. I just use two pins because I like to make adjustments as I'm sewing. So I usually put a pin at the beginning and the end and then I take this over to my machine and then as I'm sewing around, which I sew all the way around with a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance, sometimes I just I kind of adjust the, um, the edges of the opening so that my zipper is perfectly centered in the middle. Okay, so your zipper pocket is sewn in place, opens and closes, you're going to flip this over and then bring this top edge, this <clears throat> the top, the folded edge of the top 
lining piece, bring it down to meet the folded edge of the bottom piece. And I just clip them together along the bottom edge like this. And then I should have my ironing mat open here. What I do is I just press it upwards like so. Okay. And then you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to have it this side facing up and just flip the body panel out of the way and then you're going to sew starting at the top here back stitch and you're sewing through the facing piece and the lining pieces you're going to start at the top back stitch sew all the way down and then back stitch when you get to the bottom folded edge and then you do exactly the same thing on the other side you sew along here moving your body panel out of the way okay so it's hard to see because i used a light colored thread but i did sew up the sides here of my zipper pocket i can take my clips off and then i'm just going to trim a little bit along the outer edges because it'll make closing the bottom of my pocket a little bit easier you don't really need to trim the rest because it doesn't go into the the seam allowance at all and I actually prefer not to trim the ends of my zippers if I don't have to and before you continue open your zipper pocket and leave it open and for the, re the, the remainder of the lining assembly okay so now we have both body lining panels are ready with our pockets and we have our lining gusset we're going to attach these exactly the same way that we did for the exterior. There's really only one, uh, one difference. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark my centers. And you mark those on the wrong side. And then again, you use the, the, the set bottom center mark on the pattern piece here. And mark the centers okay now you're going to do exactly the same thing and you start by clipping the bottom center marks and then the top corners and then everything in between you also do the same and uh, you clip a little bit here around the, uh, the bottom corners, uh, just about quarter inch, so you don't wanna go too far. And when you're sewing these pieces together, you start sewing at the top corners with your typical 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then as you start sewing down the sides, I want you to increase your seam allowance. Um, you can go anywhere from half an inch to 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. And by doing this, what you're going to do is make your lining fit nicely inside of your exterior shell. You don't want um, the lining to be baggy. So by increasing the seam allowance just along the sides here in the bottom, but when you get back to the corners here, you should go back to your typical 3 8 of an inch seam allowance because you want your side seams to line up when you're sewing the lining panel, the lining shell to the, the exterior shell. So I'm not gonna go through all of this in detail because uh, we've already I've already demonstrated how to do this um, and then I will so I will pause the video I will attach these body panels and then when I come back we're just going to uh, do the final assembly of the bag okay so I have the lining shell uh, complete. I'm just going to trim my seam allowances. I'm not sure if you can you can see because once again I've, I've used a lighter color of thread but um, I started with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then I increased it's uh, somewhere between half an inch and 5 8 of an inch. Okay. Right. 
just going to take this out. Now I'm going to take my exterior shell. So you're going to make sure that your uh, flap is folded down if you want. You can actually even just um, tuck it inside because you want to make sure that you don't sew that in the top seam. Then you want to make sure as well that your rectangle rings point down towards the bottom of the bag. Now the direction that you want to put this inside the lining shell is really personal preference. Um, I usually put the zipper pocket at the back, but you can do what you like. Now this is going to be a bit of a snug fit, obviously, because we used a smaller seam allowance on the lining, but it will definitely still fit. Um, I have been asked why don't I insert the lining shell inside the, um, the outer shell, uh, right sides together, and the reason why I do it this way is because there's less um, there's less flipping of the bag this way. It, this is just a direct reach in, pull it out once, and then, but if you're doing it the other way, there's a bit more flipping uh, right side, inside out. Uh, if you give it a try, actually, you'll see what I mean. It's kind of hard to explain. Okay, so when you're pinning the top edges together, you always start with your four side seams. Um, it looks nicer if they're lined up perfectly. Okay, so once you have all four side seams uh, uh, clipped or pinned together, then you, uh, you clip the rest of the top edge. And then you go over to your machine and you sew them together. Um, I usually sew the the top seam uh, twice. I don't know if it makes a huge difference, but I think especially if your strap connectors come out the top edge, it's good to sew them in place more than once. And then once these are sewn together, we're going to turn the bag through the opening that we left at the bottom of the zipper pocket. Now you might want to double check before you you sew this together that you did open your zipper pocket all the way. This is your interior zipper pocket, by the way. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to sew, uh, sew these together along this top edge and then we'll turn our bag right side out. Okay, so I've sewn the uh, exterior and the lining shells together. I'm just going to trim a little bit of the bulk at the four side seams so that the top stitching is a little bit easier. Okay. And then you're going to reach in through the opening at the bottom of your zipper pocket. And I usually start with the bottom of the bag because it has the Peltex in it, so it actually is probably the most difficult part of the bag to pull through. Okay, and then usually once the bottom is out, it's a lot easier. Obviously, if you've done an all fabric version, it's going to be even easier to, to pull through the pocket because um, cork is a little bit stiffer. Okay. All right. So, first thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> just going to make sure that everything looks good. And then I will go over to the machine and I'm going to sew the bottom of my pocket shut. My clips. Now, if you prefer, you can hand sew the bottom of the pocket uh, shut. It does look a little bit nicer. I am terrible at hand sewing, so I always use my machine for this part. So I'm gonna go over and I'm going to sew the bottom shut. Make sure you backstitch at the corners. 
Okay, so the bottom of my pocket has been sewn shut. I'm just going to tuck this inside. I have a thread here. Okay, and I can zip that shut now. Uh, then I'm just going to, again, I'm going to roll the top edge here, the seam dampen my fingers a bit. Now if you want you can actually you can press this before you do your top stitching. I tend to not do that. I just roll it and then I clip it so that it stays how I want it. And then I'll go over to my machine and I will complete the top stitching. So once the top stitching is done, your bag is ready. You just have to pull out your your flap and that will be the end of this video. And the last video, we will um, sew up our adjustable strap.